Apple Knocker Radio. It, it was the hardest, hardest lesson on the spiritual path for me to learn was that <clears throat> uh, I'm not going to be more liked by people by being in alignment with something that was unexplainable, right? What happened was the noise that people were unnecessarily living in and pushing upon everyone else uh, became more obvious to me. And so naturally the truth of life would, would just trigger them. Where like, you know, when something's really quiet, you could be whispering, but it seems like a yelling, right? Like you're outside and you, like say you're camping as a kid and you're outside in the yard and you're trying to whisper with your buddy and your parents are like, I hear you out there, shout the hell up, right? <laughs> You know what right. I mean? <laughs> like you just whispered, what happened? So that's what happens with the noise that people carry. See, it's a stress. And then the stress drives, right? That drives the idealism and the questions. And then, oh, I have this feeling. So then everything should be this way. And they're constantly projecting some sort of, you know, uh, Hitlerish type of, you know, idealism upon the world, thinking that somehow it'll lead them to freedom. But what they have to do is become free of the internal noise like allow the flow. And then now the, the noise becomes a song, which we come back to mantra, right? It becomes like an om, right? And there's a, like a natural harmony and, a, and everything's in key at that point. But when things are out of key, every thought that comes from that, every idealism that comes from that, it's, it's from something that's out of key. And so it's basically pushing everybody else out of key. It's kind of like somebody with a tuba in an orchestra and they're just, they're smacking people on the head with their tuba everywhere they go because they have a feeling that I just need to express myself, right? Right. <laughs> it just throws the whole song off. So suffering begets more suffering. And so at some point somebody has to wake up and say, hey, listen, I'm going to find freedom within myself, at least from myself. I then see what comes from that. Hmm. But in the beginning, a lot of times people get stuck in the spiritual path because they see some saint sitting in robes somewhere and they say, oh, I have to be that person. And if I'm not that person, then I'm not spiritual. It's like, no, this is a path of you being you, the deepest you, the deeper you, even before you think of the word I. And once that reality hits, you become aware of how the energy runs. You, you can feel things and experience things on a much deeper level. And you start to work with that flow. Right. I remember one time I was in a, uh, in a, uh, a protein shake place. It was called Booster Juice, right? I was in this Booster Juice place. I was just getting a strawberry protein shake and I was sitting there and I, was, I felt great when I walked in, whatever, no problem. And all of a sudden, bang, my body started, I had adrenaline rush all of a sudden. It was like, almost like I was in the middle of a war or something. I'm like, what's going on? And also I got my booster juice and I just walked out the front door and I just started walking fast. And, and who I was with at the time, she's like, what are you doing? Where are you going? Like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. I just, I just got to move. Right. So I moved next day. I found out that the owner got murdered the night before. Ooh. yeah so like you 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 start to be aware of forces astrological forces forces of nature uh forces of intent and emotion and this is why a lot of gurus are never in certain areas at certain times because they're in alignment with something they they can't tell you why they just say oh this this energy just feels right over here kind of like a comfy couch this just feels like better to sit on and then the house collapses all around the couch right <laughs> it's like that so these are innate abilities that people have to be in the right place at the right time if they can trust who they truly are. But it takes quite an unraveling of this deposited noise that's been put in the body and in the heart and the emotions and the feelings. And only until one is willing to let go of all that to find a true perspective, which takes humility, right? Most people, you can say a lot of things to them, but then like, oh, that one thing, that's it. You know, I don't believe you for a shit, right? And I was like, yeah, but this one point of view is actually causing you a lot of harm, right? You're actually feeling like garbage all the time because of holding on to this one point of view. And they'll still not want to let it go. So if they're at that stage, then they're not ready for the enlightenment path. They might be ready for the control path, but not the enlightenment path. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, you... Before we started recording the proper interview, when we were just chatting and some of the other video or some of your other podcasts that I've listened to, um, you mentioned about how this awareness and this understanding, it's not really rational, right? Like you mentioned before we started the interview, you um, mentioned how <laughs> you used to think that if you read enough books and you like understood it, then you would understand, but that wasn't really understanding in the way you're talking about it now. For somebody like me, and it sounds like somebody like you, I have thousands of books. I'm, that's who I am. I read. I, I want to understand things. And also, like what you say right now, it inspires me, man. Like it really it, it like speaks to my heart. Mm -hmm. But immediately I start hearing my, my brain going, but how could you know 
Like, how could those gurus know, really? How is the universe really communicating? My point is, or my question is, how does one step into experiencing and feeling what you're talking about and not trying to logic their way through everything? Is there like a method for that, a practical method? If this is my head, right? Right. And I experience everything. Like, hey, what's going on over there? What's going on over here? What's going on over here, right? And this is the ego. You can see that there's going to be a dwindling of awareness, right? There's going to be, uh, I'm going to be able to see less. The, the hearing's going to be muffled. You know, if we just talk about five senses, we're not even talking about other senses that may be apparent because the five senses take up the majority of your attention. A lot of times you're just always focused on those five senses. But once you pull yourself out of the ego, then you're more raw. You feel things more deeply. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden things that were unbelievably uh, like uh, impossible for you to feel become overwhelmingly painful in some way. So that's, that's why once you wake up in some way, you know, any layer of you that you discard, what happens, you become more sensitive, you start to feel stuff more, and then you have to hold a deeper level of center and allowing things to move through. So first thing you have to do is have enough humility, which I, I can sense in you, you already have it, right? I mean, when people face life and death, they naturally already have it a bit, because you realize the inevitability of you have to let go of it sometime. Like when you die, do you think that you're able to hold on to your idealisms then? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I believe I should live, right? <laughs> Don't you go, you know what I mean? So, so really, the, this is the path of inevitability. And once you surrender to the law of life and death and the law of life and death within you, then what happens is a natural process starts to take place. So it's not about a control. It's about surrendering control. Right? It's about just letting go of your idealisms about who you think you are, all your limiting beliefs. Even your, and, and then, you know, these are the ideas as far as the stories, but then there's also the feelings inside you that you take seriously. Like there's certain feelings that are legitimate, that are coming from the true place, but there are certain feelings that just everywhere you go, I always say this, if everywhere you go, you have the same feeling, like, like say you're always irritated. Oh, that irritates me. That irritates me. This irritates me. Then you go into another environment that irritates me. Chances are you're just carrying that irritation like a suitcase and just smacking every single scenario with it. Right. So at that point, that is a good indicator that you can let go of taking that irritation so seriously and see what happens. So this is the thing. Feelings are not wrong, but feelings that are based on just a uh, almost like a rerun that's playing over and over in your body, in your mind or in your, your emotional body. Right. Your heart. What happens is that a lot of people think that they are those things when they're not. It's just energy that got stuck. Hmm. And once you allow that, just by sitting in meditation, mantra practice, breathing practice is very powerful. These are all practices you can do that naturally empower and strengthen this process to happen at a faster rate. What happens is uh, there's this experience of freedom that is inherent inside you. And you notice that's the background through which all this stuff starts to happen. Now, once you switch to the power source as the background, this stuff just naturally becomes mobile and you never take it seriously. It comes up and you, and you might even enjoy it for a bit. Ah, that effing guy, whatever you don't do. And then you're like, oh, oh, okay, I'm done with that. Now time to let it go. And you just let it go, but you're not stuck in it. You see? Hmm. So that's that's really the best answer I can give you. I'm not sure if it was clear enough because I understand we're talking about very uh, ambiguous subjects but the truth is you have to let go of the story that's reinforcing your suffering so you have to be honest with yourself am i suffering in this moment is this is this a good experience is this a experience that's enriching my moment right now or is it is it just basically like self-abuse right mm -hmm. and if i have an idea that's reinforcing that feeling then i can let that go now just so you know you don't have to suffer in order to face atrocity in your life. A lot of people think that they, oh, I need to feel this way inside in order to do the right thing about this atrocity that I've seen on the outside. The truth is, is that if you are free from suffering and, and say, you, say you see a totalitarian regime, like you said in the beginning, say there's a totalitarian regime and you need to speak up about it or say something, right? You don't have to suffer inside in order to still express hmm. 
right? Because you start to realize that clarity is the truth and freedom is the truth. And then you start to realize, well, that is the antithesis of freedom. And so freedom will naturally start to move. No matter where you go on this planet, air moves, right? Air is always in and out of my lungs every day, that annoying air, right? Mm -hmm. It moves everywhere. It's in all my orifices and cracks. You know what I'm saying? It just <laughs> doesn't apologize. That's freedom, right? right? So freedom naturally moves. It's, it's not something that is, uh, is bound by suffering. You know, you don't need to suffer in order for air to, to express itself, right? Hmm.